said we do this at the beginning of our meeting. We're good. Yes, perfect. And then next we're going to go with the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to do so? I grab the microphone. Oh, I got the rust. Uh, I motion to approve the agenda as written. Awesome. I'll second it. There's a second to do so. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. All right, the ayes have it. We will continue on with our agenda. We'll go to section two of our agenda, board and committee updates and announcements. So um, at the top of the list here, A, board trustees. Um, with me, I do not have any updates, though the September board meeting is coming up. Um, so I will, um, once I get more information and more on the agenda there, I will um, put a call out to student government. So um, with that, let's move on to Gabe and Kristen with SACAB. Okay, so like the only update I have is um, we're still searching for a meeting time. Yeah, still searching for a meeting time. Still waiting to meet. Uh, we're hoping to meet the week of September fourth to the eighth. Um, yeah, that's that's all. Thank you. That's all on my end. Thank you, Gabe. Kristen, do you have anything to add on? Nope. That sounds pretty much like everything. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you both. Uh, now we move on to the Judiciary Committee with Reed. Hello, everybody. Um, I don't have a committee yet, and I wondered if one or two of you would be interested. Is this OK to ask in being a part of that? Because I choose the folks to be on that committee. And if anyone is interested, I'd love to have you. This, I understand and Mike, you can confirm that this committee meets. As needed, is that correct? Correct. So um, there's two things and I think Armando is going to to talk about this in a minute. So from what I've been told, that as it's currently, well, okay, let's go back. As it's currently written, you can appoint three people to your committee. Um, but I believe Dr. Barone and Armando are in the process of revamping the Judiciary Committee. Um, so um, any uh, any work um, you do would be kind of the old system, but I mean, there is no new system yet. I've not been presented. I've not been told about a new system yet. So Armando wants to kind of speak on that. So yes, what we're going to do is we're going to work with the consultants and work with uh, the dean's students office and student conduct folks to develop more judicial process. So what you're doing is you're going to serve as more kind of like the liaison between us and the group. Okay. Um, so is a committee important and needed? Not so much at the moment. Okay. Um, not if yet. you want to gather some folks, that's fine. But what we're we'll start chiming you in for the overall logistics and vision meetings once we get to that point. OK, so we'll put pause on yeah, that. Yeah, more than fine. Sounds great. And I'll hear from you on that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next, we move on to the budget committee with Alejandro. What do you have for us? As of right now, um, we are deciding upon a time for meeting. And then next week as well, we already have a, a meeting scheduled with Jip Carpenter to just go over the budget. Thank you so much for that. So we'll move on to the PR committee with Matt. Uh, quick question to Alejandro. Uh, when's the meeting scheduled for? The meeting is going to be on uh, Wednesday, uh, August 30th at 3.30 p.m. Okay. Any other questions to the budget committee? All right, next is to uh, the PR committee with Matt. Yeah, so for the PR committee, I've been just trying to catch up, making sure I'm aware of all the sunshine laws. Um, I've been networking and brainstorming a bunch of ideas, um, including an idea that was partially brought up in our last meeting around a comment box that I'll just waiting to meet with the PR committee. Um, and I'm still looking for the rest of my committee for PR as well. I know Mike said that you were willing to be a part of it, but that's the only one who is confirmed. It looks like Paul's willing to, and we're trying to set up a meeting time. I did put out a poll for meeting times in the chat. I'll follow up with that. Cool, cool. Um, so any other questions, PR committee? Going once, going twice. All right, we will move on. Um, sustainability committee with Naomi and Paul. What do you guys have for us? Um, we got reached out to through an email and we just had to set up our first like meeting with the um, director, I guess, and uh, start discussing our collaboration ideas slash efforts. Yeah, I um, ran into uh, uh, Cassie with ASCP um, this morning in the food pantry 
And um, we talked about setting up a, a when to meet. I neglected to, uh, to CC in that. Uh, I will CC you so we can figure out a time that works for all of us. Um, Seaton's really busy, so it sounds like that meeting might happen in September. Um, you know, I wanted to just kind of raise the question if anyone's interested in uh, joining the Sustainability Committee. Um, you know, this is where you'd get in at the point where we're deciding how it is we're going to collaborate on stuff, what it is we want to try and do as a committee. Um, and so it's a critical time for like shaping it. And uh, even if you don't want to be in it, if you have strong thoughts about what that committee should be or do or how often it should meet, um, you know, you have my ear and I'd be happy to hear what you have to say. Um, the way I see it until we meet with the various sustainability campus program, I think we should probably look at maybe some biweekly meetings if that. So, um, but uh, you'll hear more from us in the future. Thank you, Paul. Matt, you have a comment to that? Go ahead. Um, so I will be willing to join you in a number of your meetings and work with you on setting up any events you guys are interested in. Matt. I'm happy to go. Cool. Um, a student approached us during uh, during student work day at the yeah outside, and she wanted to start a sustainability fair. I told him I would communicate or like connect you guys with her. I will have her email for you at the end of the meeting. Uh, point of clarification: Did you say that she wanted to have a sustainability fair here at MSU Denver? Yes, oh. she's interested in starting a sustainability fair. Hell yeah. Go to Will, then me, and then, yeah. Quick question for the committee. Um, how many members can you have? Just two? Uh, there's no ceiling on our committee. Um, if there, if we found a reason for there to be, we might discuss that. But at present, we, you know, it's more like we need people than we need less people. Thank you. With that being answered, then I like to say that I'm interested in joining. Okay, yeah. Um, We'll just put you in on our when to meet um, meeting then with the director of the, was it EACP? Thank you, Will. And I just want to say about the meeting with the ASCP people, um, really, we don't all have to go to that unless you really want to. Um, it'll be a little harder to schedule fly people's um, schedules and, and theirs um, than just coordinating maybe the three of ours. And we can still report back with some notes to the general committee about what's going on um, so that nobody feels left out. But yeah, because... It's it's like a whole month of a calendar where you have to go through and mark where you're available. It'd be a little bit of a hassle to ask of the whole committee. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm just here to support whatever they need. Perfect. And then um, this is just a comment for the sustainability committee to put this on your calendar. Um, ASCP does a monthly creek cleanup, um, the creek right by Lawrence Street. And the next one is August 31st. So, um, We've been, I've been posting it on Instagram and all that stuff. I've been just been spreading the word of ACP because they're one of our partners on campus. But I just want to put that guys on your radar. Um, it's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, we did that. I know Paul and I went last time with Re as well. Um, we we did that last semester, and I think um, we should absolutely do it again. It's an easy way to be with ACP, be in uh, in good space with them, and just uh, get back to the community. So um, I just throw that you guys away. Go ahead. And actually, just one other small comment. I know the Auraria Sustainability Committee or program has a free store. Um, so if you guys can reach out to me when they figure out those hours so we can try and spread the word. Yeah, they were presenting or they were had it during Welcome Week where they were handing out free clothes and um, other free items that they've had donated. All right, thank you, Matt. Anything else for the Sustainability Committee? Going once, going twice. All right, we shall move on. Now we're on to faculty slash staff senate with Denny because John is not here. So Denny, do you have an update for us? Uh, given that there's two committees, the Academic Policy Committee and the Student Affairs, I only oversee the po Academic Policy Committee. We are having our first meeting on September 30th at 8 in the morning. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you so much, Denny. Eight in the morning, got it. Next, we will go to the Dean of Councils with Paul. You're a representative for that. Uh, thank you. I've, um, I'm touching base with uh, uh, Dean Tackett to figure out where and when these meetings take place and so that I might better serve in that role. Uh, I have seen on my schedule a chairs and directors meeting. I don't think, is that the same? Yes. Oh, okay. 
Well, I sent him a bit of a redundant email then. Um, so that first meeting will be on the 6th of September, if I understand correctly. Um, and I'll uh, give a good report, good thorough report on what they talked about. And if any of y'all want me to raise an issue at that council, I'm happy to. Um, you know, I like speaking truth to power. So um, just let me know or shoot me a message. Perfect. Thank you so much, Paul. Now we'll go to the tri institutional Leaders Committee with Will. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking Matthew for being there for the meetings this past week with the other SGAs. Um, with that being said, some things that we've discussed um, are potentially setting up a tri institutional event for all three uh, student governments for next month. When that would be, that's still up in the air. That's still between like us deciding and, you know, deciding with the other SGAs. I am planning on writing something up for uh, Constitution Day next month, trying to potentially um, take out two birds with one stone, a tri institutional event slash Constitution Day kind of thing. So, I'm still in the works on that, but I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you, Matt. Do you have anything? Because you're at that meeting. Do you have anything, Dad? Yeah, I just brought up how the three institutions could also work on some tabling events. Awesome. Thank you all so much. So now we'll open it up to open floor announcements and updates. I have one, but I mean, if anyone wants to go first, please feel free. Go first. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go first then. Um, a few things here. Um, first, um, great job. I want to give thanks to this council because um, we were not up and running, but um, as we're still getting up and running, but um, for Welcome Week and Convocation, we really killed it. I mean, we gave away all those school supplies that we ordered. It's about almost in the five grand range of what we ordered. So um, thank you guys all for being there. Um, it was a, a team effort and, and it really showed and we got to talk, meet some great students. One of them might be in this room today, wink, wink. Um, but um, we really killed that there. So I want to say thank you guys to, for showing up to that. Secondly, um, Alejandro and I ended, uh, uh, attended the University Planning and Budget Advisory Committee and Process Making Meeting this morning um, at 10 o'clock. Um, there's a resolution up there to a point um, to talk about it later. But um, good thing we were there because they have a committee that's going to be um, started up called the Total Rewards and Compensation Committee. This is a committee that all that will kind of look at employees from administration to faculty to student employees and look at their compensation packages over the next year or two. So um, they're going to get back to us and they're going to be probably looking for a student to represent on this committee. So um, once I get information from that, I will open it up. Um, I absolutely think we should represent at this meeting. Um, we're talking about compensation packages, and I think that might interest some people in here. So um, just thought I'd let you know those are my two updates as of now. Oh, good. Uh, Naomi and Paul, sorry. Yeah, um, just something that I think you all and everybody who watches this um, should probably put in their calendars. Um, on September 13th, um, there is 11 to 1, um, a critical dialogue presented in the JSSB where lunch is provided. Um, done by Desiree Richards, the uh, Native and Indigenous Student Program Coordinator. Um, she will be talking about basically how it is important to consider the dialogue and the concepts and the teachings when it comes to like including Native and Indigenous students here on campus um, and just getting that exposure to understand um, how to make them feel more included here at MSU Denver on the academia side slash everything side. Um, yeah. Do you mind saying that, like, if there's a calendar invite, do you mind just sending that out to all of us? Yeah, and it will. it's in person, too, so it's, it's not a virtual event. I don't know if you can sign in virtually. I'll have to ask, but, yeah, I will put that in the chat as well. Thank you. Yeah. We got Paul, Matt, and then me. Go ahead. I, I want to raise um, an invitation that I did last year. Um, uh, I'm going to the annual Ricardo Falcone Memorial up in Fort Lupton um, with a handful of folks from the SDS, and um, I want people to know that you would all be welcome to come if you'd like. Um, uh, Alex took me up on it last year, but he got sick the day of. So um, it really is a good opportunity to like learn a little bit more about the, uh, the Chicano liberation struggle, um, a little bit more about uh, La Raza Unida and the, the history of it, how the students were involved in it, um, and how Ricardo Falcone, a student activist, came to be um, murdered by white supremacists in Fort Lupton back in, uh, well, 52 years ago now. 
Um, that'll be this Saturday, and we're doing some carpooling, and so we have a few more spaces if anyone's interested. Um, uh, his his uh, his wife that has survived him uh, now teaches at CSU, teaches uh, Chicano Studies, um, and is a really inspiring uh, speaker. So I just wanted to offer that opportunity, and for anyone listening, if you're really interested, reach out to Paul Nelson. You can email me or, um, yeah, see me running around campus, talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. We'll go on to Matt. I just wanted to bring up a couple of events that passed through my email. Um, I did one was uh, uh, President Davidson has a welcome back event on August 31st. Um, I believe it's in the King Center uh, from 7.45 to 10 a.m. Uh, where they're going to talk about like the state of the university. And then also on Thursday, September 7th from 11 to 2 in St. Cadretons, um, there will be a discussion on the Rary Campus Master Plan that I also forward to everybody in their emails. Thank you, Matt. Um, it's going to go me, Will, and Denny. Um, I forgot to add this in. Fall Fest is um, September 20th, and it's going to be from... I didn't write it down. I think it's 11 to one or two um i believe we're in the process of getting signed up um but that's um a really big event where we get a lot of engagement from students um traditionally we give out things um this year i think danny had a really cool idea um giving out like a like a like a spiced melon or something like that um but i think we should absolutely i'm just putting that guys on your guys calendar um that's the next tabling event that's coming up that we're going to need to be at so um i will leave it there well, I'll let Danny speak to it when I'll let Danny speak to it. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking of converting like melons, like watermelons or any other type of melon into like little popsicles. And then, you know, just having like chili powder and other chamoy or whatever other students want to add to it. Um, but they would be like very small out of one melon so we can give multiple. Yeah. Sure. Or um, I mean. I was just thinking of cutting the fruit into like little either like triangular pieces or just like little balls and then have toothpicks and like here's some chili powder and yeah that would be so cute oh wait so are we gonna get like drinks and stuff too like gatorades and waters because it's about to be hot i don't care global warming got us got us out here okay it's 90 degrees and it's raining like it's disrespectful well it's 70 degrees today but whatever yes. um paul go ahead um I like the idea, um, but I have, a, I have a kind of non sequitur. Um, Federico Chavez, one of our uh, peers from Front Range Community College, uh, gave me a really good idea last year when we were um, we were at some uh, big intra-college event, right? And uh, he said that they have this thing they call the happy wagon that they roll around. It's like the equivalent of a dentist's toy chest, but for adults. Uh, think of things like little fidget toys or uh, maybe something less uh, riddled with plastic. I don't know. Something that people would like to to see if you were just rolling around, maybe some like good snacks and some like cold waters on a hot day. And some of us with some free time could go around talking to students about student government, tell them about these meetings and ways that they can participate in what we're doing. Um, so we get more students like this coming in. Um, yeah, so just to kind of add to the ideas that we're talking about, but I do like what Danny's talking about. Let me do and then direct response, Matt, um, at your in charge of events, SPR chair, put that make sure, make sure it's on your calendar. Um, that's a big event that I will gladly help plan with you as well. So Nate, Nate may go ahead. Just to keep in mind when we, um, sorry, when we run like events and things like that, that we try to keep it like as gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan as possible, just to be mindful of that. Um, especially, um, I, I've just learned in a lot of like the STEM department there, we have a lot of people who have like celiac disease and things like that. So I just wanna make sure we give them options when we're, handing stuff out and all the other stuff. So beautiful idea, Denny. Um, so yeah. All right. anything else for open floor announcement? Matt? Well, in response to the fall fest, I just want to clarify it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Lawrence Street. And to Naomi, um, in any events that I'm involved in, I will definitely keep in the dietary restrictions in mind. Denny then will. Denny then will. Uh, Santa Bryant was here for a previous meeting talking about Constitution Day. He, she reached out to me about being the primary point of contact for that. So 
that's uh, I agreed to it and we are working on it. I will keep you guys updated. And yeah, we're just having ideas and sort of do like a trivia thing. So students stay uh, in the area and they stay engaged. And then if anybody has a contact or like can guide me through how to get some MSU swag, I will appreciate that. So, I mean, and let's talk about it later because I know we're running out of time. Go to Will. Um, if it could be an email, that'd be great too. Um, we're coming out public comment, that's why. So, but um, Will, you're up next. Okay, I'll make this real quick. Uh, two weeks from now, from today, uh, campus director will be here. So, if you guys can think of anything that you'd like to talk to her about, um, just you know, forewarning. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, Paul, you had your hand raised. Cool, cool. Any other open floor announcements? Love it. Now we'll move on to advisor updates from Dr. Barone and Armando. Go ahead. In terms of Fall Fest, I'm not too sure if y'all have signed up. I would just say sign up again. If anything, a duplicate earlier, so we'll erase it. So go ahead and sign on that as a student organization. Um, Great job on the fall for welcome week and convocation. Um, thank you for everyone who had helped out during those weeks in terms of just the planning, logistics, and setup. Um, I passed out name tags for all of our new folks, the old folks. I'm safely assuming you all still have your name tag. <clears throat> and I think that's all I have on my mind right now. Thank you, Armando. Dr. Dr. Maroon? Uh, the only updates I'm thinking about are there will be committees, um, and I, I think I sent you all, I get so many emails, I sent an email about a statewide, the Colorado Department of Higher Education um, will be hosting their first um, statewide, I don't know what it's called, I'm forgetting what it's called, but it's basically for all student government leaders across the state, and they are virtual meetings, I believe the first one is September 21st. Um, which is, I think, a Thursday. And so they happen once a month. Um, Dr. Simpkins asked me to make sure that we have two representatives. Go ahead. Did you have a question? Oh, I, I thought you had. This is, is this CSGC related? CDHE. I think that's related to CSGC because that's the Chicago Student Government Coalition. They usually go to these meetings. So um, I, I, I'm just asking, but yeah, I think it's the same thing. So Is right, it the same going. one? I don't know the acronym. You think? Because I know the CSGC reps from last, yeah, from last year went to these meetings as well. Yeah, um, okay. Okay, so they're connected, yes. and I believe last year you all just rotated, or how do we want to do that? Because they, or was it the co-chairs? I don't remember how that happened. <laughs> um, from my understanding, it was the CSGC reps. Now it can be any way we want. I believe we can just appoint anyone. Okay. I think. Whoever doesn't have like an active committee assignment or something, this would be a great chance for them to kind of step up and be like, hey, I can, take, I can go to these meetings and I can represent us on that okay. board. But that's just my CSGC. humble opinion. So. Right, you're one person. Okay, well, I'm just going to throw it out there. We do, I would like for us to, um, you all to think about it. It's on Thursdays at 11, so I don't know. I think we should decide based on availability too, um, who would be able to show up to the meetings. It's pretty important. They do want two representatives, not one. Um, just in case, you know, if someone can't make it or show up. So um, I will be bringing that to you all again, probably, and maybe just consider it for now, but we will need to uh, present names. And then because you all have a different council, most of the time it's been presidents or vice presidents who serve on this committee. And so because of your structure being very different, that's something else. Like if we're going to keep this whoever's assigned to it just consistently, that's fine. But in the past, you've also asked for rotating representatives. And so I just want to, whatever you want to do, I just need to be able to communicate that and articulate it to the people at the Colorado Department of Higher Ed. <laughs> Thank you for that, Dr. Barone. Um, public comment is in a minute. Can you hold on to that thought? And we'll return to it after our public comment period. Is that right? So um, it is a minute from public comment, but I think we could just open it now um, as it's probably less than a minute. So um, with that, um, if there's any speakers in the audience online or in person, um, 
make yourself known. Um, please give your name and um, you will have two minutes for a public comment statement. It's two minutes, right? Is it five minutes? Oh, it is five minutes. Yes. Okay. Never mind. I know. I forgot. Uh, sorry. You know, we're, we're, we're rusty. We're, we can rest here. But um, so um, please state your name to the committee and um, I will start the timer when you when you start. Hello, um, that was loud. My name is Moises Pacheco Lewingdon. I'm a freshman here at MSU. Um, I simply wanted to offer my assistance to this committee of student governance. Um, and the reasoning behind it is, is because um, I come from an area where I have multiple connections to multiple different organizations. I sit on three boards across Denver. Um, and I just simply wanted to sit here and say, hey, if you guys need any help on the subcommittees or the committees of this board, um, that I offer my assistance and that um, I will give you guys the contacts to the organizations which I represent, which is Children's Hospital of America. I represent the Society of America as well. Um, and I have stuff in the U.S. education system and, of course, DPS because I sit on the DAC committee. So again, I'm here if you guys need any um, connections to those um, organizations. I know that a couple of other ones that have offered partnerships with me and the organizations that I represent is Salvation Army. And um, so I was just saying I'm here. I'm here to help. And if you need uh, to contact me, Coates has my email. I can also give it to you myself. Um, and so I'm just here to help. Awesome. Thank you so much for public comments. Um, and this is just a reminder to counselors. You have the choice to respond to public comment if you wish. So, but you do not have to if you don't want to. So um, moving on with that, Matt, you had your hand up to finish off advisor announcements. Well, I just wanted to respond to the CDHE um, position there. Um, I don't know how we want to structure yet, but I'll throw my hand in the ring to represent us. I think we should just do this now because it's on the like it's it was brought up. Um, or, well, I think we can just appoint two people to this now, unless you think the chairs are. This. You're gonna call that a motion? I'd second it. I motion that we appoint we we handle this now and appoint two people to this committee that Dr. Brown is suggesting. Seconded. It's been seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any um, all opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The eyes have it, so we will do. We will settle this now. So um, let's open up quick nominations for this CDH Colorado uh, Department of Higher Education Committee. Government committee. I don't know what it is. Yes, and then doc, we'll we'll do nominations. Then Dr. Brown will forward you the details. So Paul, go ahead. I'd like to nominate Matt. Okay, that nomination is it? Um, cool, cool. That's one nomination on the board. I'd like to nominate Thomas. Thank me a second. second that. And there's a second there as well. Two nominations on the board. Is there any other? Paul, go ahead. I want to nominate um, Alejandro. Is there a second to that nomination? I second it. Oh, Alejandro, do you? <laughs> I respectfully decline. All right. We have two nominations. One has been declined. Is there any other nominations on this board? Know that you can self nominate if anybody is feeling the urge. Yes. Well, he, hearing and seeing know that, um, I think I think we might we might make the same motion. I was gonna I, I go ahead. Nominate more people. Oh, go I ahead. want people who are new to student government to go into this role, and I want people who, um, you know, want to learn more about what maybe our peer institutions are doing that we're not doing uh, to enter into this role. And if you're worried about, oh, well, I don't know if I do a good job. I don't know how much it entails. Um, everybody going into this is new at it, right, from the other institutions, and yet we were able to amalgamate some 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 good knowledge sharing. Uh, um, it was a good meeting. I went to it last time. Uh, there was a breakfast at one point with uh, Jared Polis. Uh, you know, not that that's really a, may not be a selling point for some of you, um, but uh, I just want to encourage others to um, throw their hat in the ring here because uh, it's a good opportunity. So, yeah. That being said, Matt, go ahead. I would like to nominate Will. All right, Will, there's been nomination for Will on the table. Is there a second to do so? Second. Second. All right, Will, do you accept your nomination?
Will has accepted his nomination. All right. Also, please keep in mind, everyone, your capacity. I see a good handful of people already throwing hats and names in the rings for multiple committees. Try to do three to four. Yes. And that's I couldn't agree more. All right. Well, there's three nominations on the table here. Um, But there's one for Matt. There's one for Thomas. And there's one for Will, one for Thomas, one for Matt. So any other nominations on this subject? Gabe, go ahead. I want to dominate Denny. Second that. Thanks, guys. I'll do it. I'm sorry. I was. Did you say yes? All right. Now we have four nominations for this committee. Is there any other nominations on the board? Thursdays at eleven. Thursdays once a month. Yeah, Thursdays at eleven. Once a month. Th- yeah, ITA, and I already have a meeting. So sorry, guys. I refrained my ID. Okay, like so there's been a retraction there. Take off Denny's. And then you're sent to the main chat. Um, I should also inform the board that I have a class during that time, so uh, I also resign. Okay, you withdraw your nomination? Yes. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> now we're back. And, sure, you took it? Yeah, yes, you. Um, <sighs> Nomination. Thank you. Okay, it's so a lot just happened there. So we have we have one nomination for uh, Matt still on the table because five people were nominated and four people withdrew all the nominations. So we need two people, all right, Dr. Broom? We need two, but it's, yeah. Paul, what's your thoughts? I, I can do it. A second, Paul. Now, this, I'll tell you all, is like, you know, jamming my schedule so you know there may come a point where if, if my head's on fire uh, you know i, I throw out throw out a line or something we'll we'll talk about that I have if the day comes I've hopefully not word. but yeah i'm willing to do it yes i have a suggestion for you paul how about like matt be the main point of contact and you be secondary on that i don't want to necessarily set us up for like overburdening matt with all the work but uh we'll go into it trying to like we'll yeah. let that let that be plan b huh Good, sounds good. So with that, I nominate Paul for this committee. There's a second to that nomination. Second to second. All right, it's been seconded by multiple people. Paul, do you accept your nomination? Yeah, I accept. All right, cool. Now we're back to two, and this makes us much more easier to vote on. Um, so we'll just do each of them. Um, Point of order. All in favor. I, I, I would just um, I'd make a motion that we accept the two nominees. At, at, yes, we, there's really no debate. Yes, yeah. perfect. That's second. Second. So it's been seconded. Um, the motion on the board is to accept both nominees as is and just move on. So um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? All right, as unanimous, the ayes have it. We will move on with our, uh, move on with our, our updates and stuff. Um, thank you, Matt and Paul, for being on this committee. Dr. Brun, yes, Dr. Brun says thank you as well. Oh, my. Okay, so next business did you are you guys done with advisor updates advisor updates are you guys done all right cool cool all right now we'll move on to old business so um section three of our agenda is old business and the first thing on the agenda is possible safety event discussion slash brainstorm with re re kick us off this is what i mentioned in our last our first meeting of the season as the possibility of having a campus-wide or just MSU Denver um, um, safety event of some sort and talking with Dean Tackett about what that would look like. He has some funding for this, but it came about because um, a colleague of mine in my cohort mentioned that we really don't have or haven't lately um, had any kind of event to prepare us for an active shooter situation or a weather emergency or anything like that. So when people are on campus, they know exactly, or coming to campus, they know what to do. So the idea that we might, you know, I know you're thinking about constitution for next month, but maybe we could do an event where we, the whole campus comes together. Um, Mr. Tackett Taylor had said that there's a, uh, usually a better response with getting the police to come and, and 
doing these kind of events when they're smaller. So I'd love to have the opportunity to discuss with y'all in your experience, especially our advisor's experience online, what you'd suggest and any other suggestions. Like I see Paul's ready to go and, and offer suggestions on this too. But I think it's fair to say we've been very fortunate not to have had any big events. I mean, there have been small things over the years, but nothing major like other universities. And because we're right here in the smack in the middle of Denver, there are chances that things can happen. So we want to prepare our student body. Thank you, Rhea. I see some hands. I've written down the stack. It's going to be Will, Paul, Naomi, and then Matt. So uh, I love the idea, Rhea. Um, but I'm not sure if you were aware that at least I've heard that there's going to be some kind of shooter drill next month. I'm not sure if you heard anything about that. With Taylor in June, um, there was nothing that I know of that was planned and he was keen. I don't know if something happens has been planned well in advance, but he didn't let me know that. So that's, that's great to know. And, you know, I'm happy to bring that to him and, and ask his advice on this or, or, Coordinate with the police, would you recommend? Um, I mean. Is it through the police or AHEC? Do you know that? I'm not sure. I just heard that there's some kind of shooter drill next month. Okay. I'm going to give a direct will. response to that. Yeah, so <clears throat> AHEC police does have a active shooters um, like seminar or whatever where they come through and discuss um, best practices and just, you know, safety tips. If there was a lockdown, a shooter drill, whatever it may be, um, I think what you are talking about is there's a fire evacuation drills happening within the next month or so. So the drill for Tivoli is it's going to start. Oh, it's actually next month. It's this week um, on Monday. There's plenty of buildings. I'm trying to see what's the most important for us. On Friday, September 8th, is Tivoli City Heights and Links Crossing. And then Thursday, August 31st, Plaza, King Center, Art Central West. So across the campus, there's going to be a, def- a bunch of different, but those are fire evacuation drills. Oh, well, these are fire evacuation? Well, yeah, okay. and those are set from 8 to 4 p.m., so be ready at all times. Okay, so... Can we talk to you about delivery of that, because then if we share this information, it's helpful right mm-hmm. um, yes and no dr brown if you have a clear more professional please so taylor and i actually did talk about this re he told me that you had talked to him in june uh-huh. and so yes there are active shooter type trainings that are offered through acpd um we've had them come to different departments i know various departments host them they do prefer it to be more small and intimate not as big so i'm Wondering, are you thinking, at first I interpreted it as you wanted to have some kind of training for TSAC respectively, but it sounds like you want an event around safety across campus. And I think I think those are two very different things. So if it is more like something safety across campus, I do think there are ways that we can do that. ACPD would definitely probably need to be involved, AHEC potentially too. Yeah. Um, they may already have some things that they are working on. I don't, I think it would be really challenging to try to do something tri-institutional sure. is what I will say. My advice would be to stick with MSU Denver and maybe um, reaching, we can help facilitate that um, connection with ACPD, a uh, Jason Molidor is the interim chief of police right now. Um, so I would say that's where we could start. And then, and I have a good relationship with him. We could start there. Um, and so does Taylor. So we could just start there if that's a direction you want to go and see what, what the options would be. Or maybe having him come to one of these meetings. I don't know. But they're two very different things, a training versus like an event. And I think if I can just... I'm jumping ahead of you, Paul. I apologize just to respond if that's okay. Direct response. Is yeah. Your, your question is next, Paul. Something small sounds great, but if there's something existing that we can tell people about, yeah. that's a lot less effort on our part, but it's also about getting the information. Yeah. I mean, that's what we are. We're a conduit, aren't we? We're hoping to be anyway for all the students, the faculty, everybody. And being able to help share that message, whether it's on our social media, you know, or 
on the website, anything that we can do to help get that information out and let people know what's happening is great. I know for graduate students, especially in my cohort, you know, we're here in the evening. We miss out on all that. Yeah. So. Yeah, all right, know. Paul, your question is next. Thank you. Um, so I think there's a few questions that need to be raised, right? I, I think there's um, every, about every year I've been on campus when we've had like talks about safety or events about safety, it is conflated with the police. And in, in, in that conflation, we lose a lot of discussions about safety more broadly, right? If we were to have an event about safety, are we going to talk about ventilation in preparation for what could be something worse than COVID down the line? You know, if you look at, if you look at history, recent history, you can see zoonotical diseases increasing in frequency and severity. And so is, what's the school doing to keep us safe in that respect? You know, is that happening at these events? Or are we just talking about mass shooters and police? The next question, are we talking about the way that in which people slip on the ice walking from the modular buildings? And I'm talking about uh, disabled students that I, I'm in a, I'm in a class, uh, crypt politics, and it's pretty interesting, but one of the students talks about um, having slipped on the way here. And this is one of our students that uh, uses a service animal getting around. Um, I, I know elderly professors that have broken um, broken bones walking there. And so like, I'm here for the discussion about safety. I think we should divide the question into two things. Should we have this event about safety? Yes, from my perspective. And then the other question is, should we work with ACPD to advance their goals on campus? And that question gets a little bit more complicated. And I know that the room may have some different, different perspectives on that question. And we need to ask, how do the students feel about that? Because uh, the, AC, the ACPD gets paid, gets $4 million per year, and they have a 55-person staff, a non-insignificant number of whom are in charge of public relations and doing exactly this sort of thing. So I, I have to question, you know, how much of our budget and how much of our energy should go into that work and, and whether or not that's something the students want us doing. And so um, I just wanted to raise those questions and uh, maybe call for a division of the question. Uh, into, into two separate ones. Um, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so I will jump in there. I agree with Paul, actually. There's a lot. Safety, it's a big bubble. And I think there's a lot of different issues and a lot of different categories we can break it into. Now, I will add, we as a student government last year did a survey, um, I believe it was one of our events, and we were asking what are the issues on campus. And a not insignificant amount of students said safety on campus. And the, the common theme was it's dark on campus and they don't feel safe walking to and from campus. So I definitely think it's an issue that is the students want us to tackle and it's an issue they've brought up to, uh, up to us. Um, and I'm just giving you all some context for that. So Will, you're up next. Oh wait, um, can I do a direct response to that? Or why not? <laughs> Uh, in direct response to us having that survey when we were talking about like it being too dark on campus, that issue has been addressed multiple times and that students should be have should have been brought to it should have been brought attention to students that they are allowed to call campus PD at any time, depending regardless of their class times, and they will escort you to your car if you do not feel safe. So that should have been addressed because they're not going to address the lighting situation because that's a structural issue. And I don't I think they said something about but they don't have the funding for that. Um, so if ever a student does feel uncomfortable, just direct them to campus PD and give them their phone number and they can get an escort to their car if they do not feel safe. And they will also do a group escort as well. As long as they're going to the same location, they can do different locations, but they have to make a couple uh, different trips in order to do that just for everyone to know. I have a direct response as well, but I can wait. Will, Danny. Go for it, Danny. I know this has been brought up before regarding this uh, darkness <laughs> in campus. It sounds like there's like an evil cloud or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, someone mentioned, and then I know this this would be talking to a hack, but um, having night classes maybe like in just one building, like only in the science building, and then they have access to only that parking lot um so from like especially during the winter from like five until i don't know what time the last class is at night um, that all of those classes are moved into the science building uh or a building near and then all those students can get in and out together uh but that's a long shot all right the yeah. second will matt and mike and then thank you um it's been brought up to my attention that the fire drills are actually on our MSU website. 
like the ones planned for pretty much till September 8th. And we got a few things going on for safety. Um, we, uh, Moises will go over there and show you that website in a second. So yeah, I don't necessarily want to take away from Bree's event, um, but I agree with Paul that we should extend this conversation into other realms. But I don't necessarily think that should stop this kind of event going on. Or some other ideas I was just thinking of is how can, because of the issues of doing it all around campus and having like in-person trainings, um, working with the appropriate departments and people to create like that information in a digital form as well that all students can access, especially like Bree's comment about students doing night classes, being able to not usually being able to be a part of those active drills. And we did actually have a bomb threat like within the last year at the Lynx Crossing, I believe. We did, yes. Make a, a yes. point of order. A point of order, go ahead. So when I when I call it to divide the question, it, 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 I mean like a parliamentary term and and we haven't really done it before, so I can understand why we're continuing the discussion as as it had started. But I really do think that um, we need to split this into a conversation about is this because you, you talk about not wanting to get in the way of Ree's event. I don't want to get in the way of Ree's event, but do we agree on what the event is, you know? And so, um, you know, there needs to be two questions. Are we having an event? And then I think the question we should ask before we ask that question is, is this an event that we're co-hosting with the Auraria Campus Police Department? And, you know, once we answer that question, and that should be the question we discuss right now, I think, that's what I'm proposing, um, we can move on to the actual event, you know, because I just think that's a question. We can't just move forward assuming that they are going to be a part of it. Um, I do disagree with, with, with that, and I think that there would be a non-insignificant number of students that wouldn't like to see us um, spending their tuition on, on co-hosting an event with the police on campus. I mean, we're in Colorado where the Denver Police Department, their peers in the city, um, committed a mass shooting last year. And, you know, uh, in, in Boulder, just in, in um, I can't remember what year it was exactly, but it was in the last five years, a student was killed by campus police. And so we can't be just rushing into, into this without a, a, an understanding of the context here in this state with police and with campuses. Um, and I'm not trying to be dramatic or impose my politics. We need to think about these things because it's it's real. Um, so I, I motion we divide the question, if that makes sense. And if anyone has any questions about what that means, I can maybe help elucidate it a little bit more. I'm trying to look it up in here. So, what you so what, let me see if I can recap what you're saying here. You want to divide the question into two different discussions, potentially. Paul? Yeah. Okay, cool. I would second that motion, but let's put a timeline on it because we have a lot of things on this agenda. So, like, let's just do five minutes each. Is that fine? Um, and what um, here? So, is that all right, Paul, to make a friendly amendment to that motion? Five minutes each on each discussion? Yeah, I think that's fair. All right, let's do that. Um, I second that motion then. So, um, what the motion on the table is we're going to discuss two questions. The first one is Reese events. And then the second one is whether or not the police are involved in this event. Could you change the order there? Uh, sure, why not? Cool. Um, so whether or not police are in this event, and then Ree's event. So Ree, you have a, yes, go ahead. I just want to make a point of clarification First. if I can. Before we talk about my event or whatever, safety event, um, the, what I had talked to Taylor about was making sure every everyone understands a response to an emergency situation. I mean, that was the general gist of it to start with. So whether it's fire or shooter or any kind of weather, natural disaster, something like that, you know, what are the muster points? What's the order of what people should do? Who's in charge? You know, who are the people they go to, you know, immediately in their vicinity? And things like that that are just really one, two, three basic points that is information that can be shared possibly, you know, on our site or through departments with working with faculty senate. I'm not really sure of what that looks like. And then these other important things about accessibility and things that we'll talk about certainly too that need to be addressed. Um, 
I think are on a different scale or idea than what I was originally thinking, because I think that a lot of people come here and maybe they go to convocation and, they, you know, and they, they're talked to by their teachers, but they don't have ideas about what to do in those scenarios. And for fire, if they're having these drills, then obviously, I guess they have an order of what people are supposed to do. They're going to practice this and maybe um, with Dr. Braun or whomever, if, you know, I talked to this Jason Mullendor, he's for police, but whoever the fire marshal is, and then we, I get this information together, talk to Taylor, and then we come up with a plan of how we can disperse this information without having a specific event we have to pay to host, possibly, or maybe we do, or maybe we have a brochure or, you know, things like that. I don't know. That's just my thinking. Naomi, then Kristen, then me. So in response to all of this, <laughs> um, it's aggressive taking so far here sometimes. Um, so with the in response to like that specifically, um, I a, wanted to know. So this is like a question for you to direct response. And then I have another like question for this as well. Um, are they having talks about like the tornado shelter specifically, like letting students know that there is one in the science department, things like that? Um, so is that talk being brought up as well? Cause I've gotten like several tornado warnings this summer and I'm not about that shit. We're not even supposed to be having tornadoes here. Is, so if, the, if you could put that on Jenna, that'd be awesome if they're not already. Um, and then to also speak on like this point as well about the police and everything, um, is that I agree. Like, I think that's a really important aspect. Like, yes, we want to see how the police are being involved, but also how is, what's the word you're looking for when you're like redoing the system? My brain's fried. I'm Reform. Thank you. Sorry, I'm strictly on a genetics route right now. Anyway, um, we're talking about the reform because the reform is not just within like Denver PD. Like this is also on campus, you know, police department as well. So that needs to be brought up, I think, as well to make students feel safe about even going to them to like ask like, hey, what do we do? Where do we go? You know what I mean? Because we have a lot of ethnically diverse students on this campus who tend to be the ones that are more targeted. So why do we expect them to come to an event that is full of people who are tending to target them and make them seem like the guilty participants? So we need to, in that discussion of having them at this event, they need to be coming off as, I don't want to say necessarily docile, but at least approachable and kind and not like they're going to target us for asking questions or creating conflict or anything like that. Um, and then my third point was just that um, I agree that like for, what was the organization called um, with their budget? Anyway, I think that we need to see a breakdown of their budget because if we're going to contribute to them and you said they're getting $4 million, $4 million, bro, we don't, we don't even got that much money. Like, what do you want us to contribute when you have $4 million? Like, tell me how you're breaking it down and where you're missing money. And then maybe we can contribute and talk about how we can like collaborate on that kind of stuff. But if you have $4 million, that is no reason for you to be coming to us where our needs are going to be meant or where our budget is supposed to be going towards the students specifically. And yes, this event 1000% is about the students, but their budget is also about the students as well. So I feel like if they want us to contribute, we need to have an evaluation and someone from their financial side, their budget department, whatever, come down and break down what they're going to be spending so we can see where the holes are that maybe we would be willing to fill slash vote on. Um, that is all. Thank you. Point of order. So we've not voted on the motion that Paul and I seconded. That 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 point you made should be made in the discussion while we have time. So, um, Kristen, uh, can is your comment related to the discussion of the motion or the police thing in general? Because you're next in the stack. Um, I think I got confused. My comment isn't about the motion to have the discussion itself, but about the discussion. So. If that's what we're doing, feel free to share. Yes, <laughs> so. <laughs> then yes. in that case, I, I withdraw my comment and I'll save it for. Cool, and I'll put you first in the stack for that then, because you haven't even spoken on. Is yours related to the discussion of this motion or is it related to the. It's in response to, it's a direct response to that. Okay, so can we do, can we leave it for the discussion then? Oh, it's just to what Naomi had said. Yes, so can I put you in the stack and have you do that after the. the it's a direct response. The motion? So I mean, I mean uh, the idea here is that I would respond to what she had said right now. Um, ahead of yeah, the, the point of direct response is that it's not abused. I'm not trying to do this to get ahead of um, uh, Kristen or anything. I just want to say something about what Naomi had said. Fair enough. Do that, and then I'm ending. Just, I'm next in the stack, and I'm Fair. in the discussion. So um, I just wanted to say I attended uh, one of their town halls last year in April, 
and it was explicitly anti-reform. They actually gave us um, pamphlets that talked about the pros and cons of instituting things like body cameras, on instituting policies like having police officers mandatorily report crimes committed by other police officers against um, there were there were a long list of common sense police reforms, and our police department was spending time and money trying to convince students and the public that these would be a bad idea or that we should pause before we consider implementing things like body cameras. And so I, you know, I want to encourage us to consider whether or not this is a reformed police department before we move towards working with them as though they are one. I want to challenge the notion a little bit, but I agree with so much of what you said, Naomi. I don't want you to think that I'm just writing you off. That's if that makes sense. All right, let's vote on this motion then. So the motion was to start a discussion that people kind of ran over. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 So the motion is to do, do two five minutes brief periods, one on police and then one on Ree's events. Um, that was a motion made by Paul, seconded by me. So all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. I say nay. Um, and any abstentions? All right, the ayes have it. Um, now we can start discussion. You have five minutes, and I'm be strict with this. Ugh, whatever. So yes, Kristen, you're first on the stack. Um. So again, I am a little bit confused. On uh, this, is my first time using like Robert's rules or anything. So I apologize if this isn't. Um, like the appropriate thing to say, but my my suggestion, I guess, um, would be we do have a really um, substantial fire and emergency response administration program on campus. I think we could use that as a compromise in lieu of the police um, if that makes our students feel more comfortable. So to keep with progressive stack, it's Denny, Naomi, and then Paul. And then you're, you've, you've talked a lot. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it me? Um, I I think having the police involved, because that's what the discussion is about, right? Or having them involved. Okay. Uh, doesn't require police presence. But other than that, I think it should be a certification of materials. So I'm thinking of uh, uh, maybe then providing us or working with them to give us a manual that we give to students, but they don't necessarily have to be at the event. That way everybody knows what the expectations are for both parties in the situation and that nobody's feeling unsafe because of police presence. And then nobody feels like they have to be meek or so on and so forth. That's all. Naomi, Paul, Will. I agree and disagree. I do believe that this... Uh, the police don't necessarily need to be present, but at the same time, they do need to be present because by them not being present, we're continuing to aid in the problem of us being afraid of the police. And the point of being here is that we cannot create, we can't continue to enable this fear of the police. The police need to make themselves not be so like unapproachable to make us afraid. The point is that they can't be people that we are afraid of. They need to make themselves people we are feeling welcome to, right? And we love pamphlets and everything, but how many of y'all kept a pamphlet from six months ago? None of us? All right. So that's my point here is that we can hand out these pamphlets. We can send out these emails. But I know 85% of students do not care about these emails. They will put it in their trash bin or they will leave it in their inbox and they won't continue to go back and read it. So I feel like it would be unproductive for us to do that. And instead, I think that we need to make sure that the police are there. But they need to be trained, period. They need to be reformed. They need to have um, a presentation. They need to have a pres. Um, like a presence there that is just showing the students, showing, literally showing students that they are here to actually protect us and take a, take our words into consideration instead of just automatically making us like literally a victim, like another victim, another stereotype. Like we don't need to be another stereotype here. But that is their responsibility, not ours. That is their responsibility to make us feel safe. That is their entire being and authority and the point of having a police system here on campus is to make us feel safe. So by us telling them that they shouldn't come because it makes us feel better if they're not there, it just aids in the idea of us not ever going to feel safe with their presence. And I don't want that. Paul, then Will. Uh, police have existed since their inception to protect property, uh, which initially began as protecting uh, people as property. Um, and I, I want to ask people to consider if there has been a fundamental reform that has changed that relation 
if police uh, stand with workers or if they stand with the bosses every time there's a strike. If you see the Amazon workers that went on strike getting hauled away. I think it's, you know, when we talk about the problem with police, it's much less that people are afraid of them and much more that there are real systemic issues, like the fact that they kill thousands of people every year. They kill thousands of animals every year, like people's dogs. And uh, more than that, they waste millions of dollars every year. Now, I'm not here to say abolish the police department or get rid of them, but when we talk about reform, it definitely hasn't happened, right? Um, and so uh, that's who we're talking about bringing into this discussion. And here in this state, we are fifth in the country in, uh, in the rate of police homicide uh, of people. Um, and it's, it's definitely not a, an unrealistic or uh, irrational fear for a person to have. Um, and so I would uh, urge that we vote no on including them. And I agree with what Denny has said, that their materials could be used. I mean, we're talking about things like how to get your bike cut, or your bike unlocked if you need, how to uh, actually, what our, what our drills are, because they've had a role in developing them. And I agree with getting it, getting it out. I think that makes sense. And Kristen has a good point. We should get the fire department involved. They're just fine. Well, you have the last word. So real quick, I was going to say more, but I agree with Naomi. I don't think shutting out uh, a part of our school out would be the wise choice, especially if we're trying to overcome that fear. Um, I was going to say more of that. Yes, now thank you, Will. Discussion. Motion to give Will an extra 30 seconds to finish what he's saying. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? I abstain. Will, you, you have it. 30 seconds more. Um, all right, but as Naomi was saying, I, we just need to keep in mind that if they're going to be a part of school campus, then we, I don't think it'd be wise to completely shut them out. But like, we have to be mindful of how they present themselves as well. And also using funds from or allocated for students, I don't think that they should be having to ask us for any money, honestly. So that's it. Thank you. And time. Thank you, Will. So next, second part of the discussion, the first discussion, read your event idea. Uh, the next five order. Are... I'm sorry. It's probably just not clear because this is a new thing we're doing. We need to vote on that. The, no, the division it... of the question. And so. No, it, we don't. We the main. Motion, that's the we... Roberts rules. Part of dividing a question is that once we have discussed the first part of it, you decide on it, and so you can decide on the second part. I'm not trying to hoodwink anybody here. That's just how it works. I get that's Robert's rules. The motion I made or that was seconded that you agreed to was we're going to spend five minutes on this discussion and five minutes on the other discussion. That's not Robert's rules. That's the motion that was made and seconded. Just saying, if we do that, we will return to where we began, and we will not have benefited from having divided the question. So well, we can do that, but this is the, the point is to gain this clarity and the unity on the first question so that we can pursue the next question with that added clarity. If, if, if we're not clear on how everybody feels about the first one, we're going to go into the general discussion about it after with the same level of, oh, who knows if I we're doing it or not doing it moving forward. On, on the voting and, and not like voting itself. But I think maybe we should table it for next meeting and then talk, keep talking about this because so far we have not discussed if there's going to be an event or what is going to happen. So I think maybe we should talk about it in the next meeting. If that's a motion, I second it. I yep. agree. So all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Point of clarification where, hey, I'm just asking for a simple point of clarification on a piece of business. You don't need to disrespect me, Michael. We're voting on something. No, I'm just being, I'm being clear with you as a, as a colleague and a professional. I want to respect you and I want the same. So we'll what just, is your, what we'll, is your we'll point move past this into the rest of the meeting. Um, the point of clarification is that we're postponing this until the next meeting. Yes. Is that correct? And then we'll be discussing on it, assuming people will look into it in between then and now we'll have a more concrete idea. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, Denny. So do, I guess I'll read you this vote. So the motion is what he just. Did you say something, sorry? Oh, I muttered childish. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's we go. Talk. Okay, are we? Can we please vote on this? Yes. Okay. What we're doing? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. One nay. Any abstentions? All right. We shall move on. This will be tabled to next week. Next, um, say cab. Oh, wait. Yes. Next, we're going to move on to new business and the election of two new uh, co-chairs for this committee.
So um, we passed a resolution last week, and um, we're going to move on to that now. So um, I will pull it up. So with that, I believe the start to that resolution is that we open nominations. So co-chairs are going to be replacing what I'm doing, um, and I will open the floor to nominations for that. Tom, your hand is up first. Uh, I have two nominations. I would like to nominate uh, Matt and Denny for the positions of co-chair. I would second those nominations. Should I third that one? So Matt and Denny, um, Matt, do you accept the nomination? I'll accept. All right, Matt is accepted. Denny, do you accept the nomination? I accept. All right, awesome. There's two nominations on the table. Um, Paul, did you raise your hand? All right, well, Ree, go ahead. And I'd like to nominate Michael. Me? Mm -hmm. I decline the nomination. <laughs> Trusty, trustees enough work. <laughs> Um, I, I'll put my hand up. I nominate Will. Is there a second to do so? I second that. Is there a second to do so as well? Will, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you say you? Sure, why not? All right, there's three on the board. Um, so there's three nominations on the board. Is there I want to be Gabe, but uh, he's not here around. Yeah, he went to the bathroom. I see, I see. Yeah, technically has to accept. I think we can just he we we he'll be back. He'll be back. So we can just do that. So there's a nomination for Gabe on the board. Is there seconds? Re seconds as well. There's four nominees. All right. So just to make sure, it's Gabe, Denny, Matt, and Will. All right. Lovely. Any other nominations on the board? All right. We will go through with the resolution then. So. Let's do this. So um, the way it works is, um, so the first person who was nominated, I believe it was Matt you nominated first, and then it was Denny, or which way? Yes, it uh, goes in the order of Matt and Denny. Cool. So Matt, you will have two minutes to give a nominating speech on why you should be elected with the three nominees stepping out into the hallway. And then 10 minutes will be allocated to the council to ask questions of Matt. And then we will just switch around and keep doing that until uh, the final, nominee, or the final uh, nominee has been spoken. So. All right, as they leave, then I will start your two minutes. Um, so for my nomination for one of the co-chairs for running the meetings, um, I'd like to look and explore um, policy and legislative work. So I will definitely try and catch up a little more. There might be a small learning curve on the Robert's Rules of Order, um, but I would like to think that I would be a fair representative for everybody on this council, uh, making sure everybody is getting a fair space for their views. I believe that would conclude my time. <laughs> All right, you withhold the right to, or you don't have to use the, say you don't have to use it to full two minutes. So now we'll open up 10 minutes of council questioning from the council and Naomi uh, is first and then it's Paul. Um, so as you can see on the TSJC here, T TSJC, I'm um, sorry, um, the Student Government Council, student, the Student Advocacy Council. We do have a lot of quarrels within the council, and that requires keeping order. And that means keeping a stern but neutral hand. How do you feel like you're going to be able to fulfill that while remaining respectful to all the people involved in each of these quarrels? That is an excellent question. Um, first off, again, would be catching up with Robert's Rules of Order, because. Um, that's the most non-biased way to run the meetings um, because it doesn't really pick a side on anything. Um, and I will definitely do my best. I have plenty of time during the week to catch up on that. And my biggest standpoint is I don't have to agree with what someone says, but I will agree that they have the right to say what they need to say, again, within the appropriate structure of like Robert's Rules of Order. Paul, you have the next question. Um, mine's a kind of similar question. You'll notice uh, Robert's Rules of Order is, is really complicated. Um, none of us know, know it 100%. Uh, there are times often in the meetings, like today, where we'll come across something that we haven't done before or used before, or maybe that we've found out we've been using incorrectly. When we hit these parts of the road that we haven't been down, right, And because you, you know we all have a, a good amount of ignorance of Robert's Rules of certain sections of it, uh, this isn't meant to be read. This is a reference text, right? Um, I don't expect you to study it. 
how do you plan on like in the meeting in the moment handling that that question how do we navigate that because it, it caused a little bit of a schism today but um how might we how might you handle that in the future that's also a very good detailed question um because part of it i agree like I'm not going to be able to memorize that whole book, especially by like next meeting. I will try and get to understand the gist and understand how we've kind of done stuff in the past. Um, but I'm also fairly welcome to getting constructive feedback and the ability to learn. Um, so if it is something that I haven't known before using as a learning opportunity, um, but in the moment, um, it would kind of have to be a judgment call on whether it would be a learning opportunity in the meeting or maybe something to maybe table and bring outside the meeting so I can learn to apply in the future. Thank you, Matt. All right. Any other questions for Matt? There's seven minutes on the board still. So. Paul has another question. Going into this, um, being chair, what's what's what would you say is your your central goal that you want to accomplish? I know you have more than one goal, but uh, what's the thing you think you're going to give uh, the most time? Well, obviously, all of us have run and have our own personal positions in this committee. Um, but honestly, one of my biggest strengths and modes of leadership is actually support leadership. Um, so I actually want to do my best to support everybody in their goals as best I can. And obviously there will be points we vote on things and something might be voted down. But again, want to make sure there's space for voices to be heard. I have a question for you, Matt. So the co-chair takes a lot of administration role um, in, in, in the process. So like the first thing I did when I was acting co-chair was I got the committee chairs in touch with the various people that they need to be. I mean, like just an example for Paul, I got him in touch with Dr. Retrum, the chair of the Dean of Council, stuff like that. And um, I also informed um, what had uh, transpired in the meeting to senior leadership as well. Are you prepared to take on that task? I would like to get some support and getting up to speed from like you, Mike, to like know those connections and who needs reported to. Um, but because I'm actually only taking two classes this semester, one of them actually being a leadership class, um, I do feel like I have the time at this point to be able to handle those tasks. Thank you, I appreciate it. Any other questions from Matt? All right, going once, going twice. The council forfeits the rest of its time. Matt, do you mind going in the hallway and sending in Denny? Okay, Denny, you have two minutes whenever you start talking. Uh, thank you for your nomination, first of all. Um, I think my previous experience in a classroom would come in really handy when it comes to directing a conversation. Um, I directed middle school discussions. Just want to throw that out there. Uh, um, um, I think... I think we need a fresh set of eyes that are not as tired and maybe don't have baggage coming on with our personalities. Um, and I'm really willing to do this. Like I am really willing to put in my time and my efforts. And um, I think I could lead this um, mostly impartially. And I am willing to not only uh, hold accountable, like hold others accountable, but hold myself accountable. Um, yeah, just check myself and check you guys. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's it. Thank you, Denny, for your uh, speech. Now we have 10 minutes of discussion to ask you comments or questions. So um, we will start, well, Progressive stack. Gabe hasn't gone at all today. Gabe and then Paul. 
thinking like, okay, so this council, there's a lot of big personalities. There's a lot of big, you know, ideas, big thoughts and stuff. And with that, there can come disagreements. And as the chair, you would have to be able to, ha- to you know, direct the discussion during that time. And so if there is a disagreement, what, how would you handle it? I think what previously happened, it was, we were very confused on what just happened regarding camp security and safety. I think what we did of going back to like, oh, this is what this is what we're trying to solve, but we derailed a little bit from what happened. I think that would be my main point when I'm taking notes, like what is the point of the discussion right now? And it, our comments or direct responses taking us there? If not, then we all have agreed and we all have said I for a certain point. And if not, then I, I am willing to shut it down, to bring it back to what we had previously agreed. Just. So, Denny, you know, um, you, you, you saw something play out. We're talking about it now. This is was the thrust of some of the questions we asked uh, the previous, uh, you know, T here. Um, you know, there are times in which your decision as a chair will be called into question by one or more members of the group, right? Sometimes that person will be one out of 12 and everybody will agree with you that, um, you know, what you're doing is correct, but the one person's calling into question and uh, trying to make some use of the parliamentary rules. Um, it can be frustrating. How do you deal with your decision being called into question? Um, how do you consider that? And how do we, like, and it might be a moment of ignorance on Robert's rules, which we we all have more ignorance than knowledge of Robert's rules, I think it's fair to say, right? Um, you know, when we hit those parts of the road where we, we were like, oh, you know, we're navigating a, a, a type of parliamentary procedure we haven't done before, we have we don't know how to do it. Um, how do we how do we navigate that space or how would you do so as chair? And so kind of two questions. Sorry to have such a rambling one. First one, how do you deal with people that, you know, call into question your your decision as chair? And second one, how do you deal when we, you know, hit a section of the road we're not familiar with? I think as chair is not my job to like handle myself more than like handle the room in that sense. Uh, if you're asking me how I would deal with someone like internally, um, someone's disagreeing with me and I'm like internally feeling, feeling unregulated, then that's when me to like check myself. Um, and I would hope that if that happens at the end of the meeting, I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. Like that was not for you to, it wasn't personal. Um, and then, I mean, I, if I am chair and you will say I for something, then that's what goes. It doesn't matter what I want as chair. I mean, if it gets to a conflict like it did, yeah. and then just like I presented that motion, I was like, okay, maybe once our spirits are down, then we can table and talk about it next month. Because at that point, the conversation was not going anywhere. And it was getting a little violent over there. Can I offer a clarifying question for the first aspect? Any? Yeah. All right. Um, so let's say that we, we we motion something, everybody votes and passes it, right? And then, you know, one person's thinking about it. Let's imagine James sitting over there, you know, wrote the Constitution. And he's thinking, hey, this, this is actually not against our rules in some way. Um, and yet he's in the minority here. That's the kind of disagreement or calling into question of, like, your decision-making as chair that I want to see, like, how would we handle that? Less less about interpersonal, because I know we're all going to have interpersonal decision uh, differences, and I know some of you think I'm difficult to work with. That's fine. So it's probably true. Um, but I'm interested in the parliamentary side of it is, is um, you know, will you give space? And, and that, that does, you know, that does truly surprise me, given our flat structure, because the one thing that I got out of NACA was how some people use Bobby's rules. Like we are very much strict in like the authoritative part of Robert's rules, even though we are a flat structure. And how are we a flat structure, but then still maintaining that like authoritative, just like one parliamentary? Um, I think that sort of violates the uh, essence of a flat structure government. So just if quickly say, I think that's a larger question. 
you know, and I have a lot I want to say on it, but I won't. But, but, and I think that's how I would handle it. Just like we did, like, yeah, you're right. What I did of saying we were month, like, let's put this motion and let's handle it for the next meeting. That was, I'm sure that was a violation of Robert's rule. Oh. That was more about Bobby's rule sort of thing. No, that's, that was germane as I understand the rules. Like to, for you to offer to postpone discussion of a thing is like takes precedence. And so whether that was intentional or not, I, you know, uh, and if you're willing to go through Robert's rule with me and like training, train me for sure. it, I am happy to do that. Cool. Yeah. And I, I have a more, a little bit more of an optimistic view of Robert's rules and that can be, maybe you might anticipate that being naive, but um, I'd like to have a discussion with you about that. I just don't want to spend more time on it now. If that's okay. right. So um, the questions next to me and then re I'll make a question quick. So a lot of being chair and a lot of like what I've had to do this week is a lot of mystery roles. So connecting various people from the committee chairs to certain different aspects in the university. Um, so like I did that with the sustainability committee. It got them in contact with our partners on campus. A lot of it also is making sure we're going to events, make sure we're kind of rounding up the council going to events as well and communicating a lot with Kenny, a lot with Armando, stuff like that. Um, do you think you'll be able to do that as chair? I think I am going to dedicate myself to student government and school for the next year. Uh, so yes, um, yeah, I don't think it will be a problem, and I have committed myself to this, like the work that we're going to do in the council and to mandate the relationships that we have with admin and faculty and a heck, like I. That that's what I want for us to have a good face in this campus and with the students as well, and to be a present driving force, not of like pushing back. Um, I know there has to be pushback, but if we're talking about like parliamentary and we're talking about like diplomacy, then that can be done in a, like an exterior aspect as well. Thank you, Re, and then Naomi. I just wanted to say that I appreciate your passion and and freshness to this role and i think that working as a team you would have all of our interests at heart and i think you'd lead the meetings very i don't know fairly equitably and i think that's what we need and it's you know leading the meetings should be something that isn't painful and it should be forward thinking and so that we are good representatives on campus and doing our job well. And I think just making a comment rather than asking a question, I think you do that ad admirably. Thank you. Um, two minutes, I'll, I'll to you. Okay, cool. So as you know, Denny, I got a mouth on me sometimes, but my, I'm gonna talk real quick on a personal experience and then ask you a question. Being a member of TSAC is very hard sometimes, especially when you're coming from an ethnically diverse background, whether that be black, indigenous, Hispanic, Ethiopian, you know, the many uh, Arabic, anything that you can think of that is not white is very hard because first of all, we are governed by Robert's rules. I don't know who this white man is. I don't know if he's white. He sounds white. I don't know how I feel about him and these white rules that he be putting out here. I'm sorry, these colonialistic construct rules that have come from most likely a European country. That does not constitute or contribute to the ethnically diverse group that is here on campus and is not very inclusive of the way that we govern ourselves. That's not okay with me personally speaking. So as your position as a co-chair, how would you take that into account for when dissolving problems? I see this as a marriage. <laughs> I, I have told my husband that I'm not only married to him, but also to Aristotle. <laughs> um, and that in a marriage is a give and take, like it's a compromise. Um, you know, I also think Robert sounds white and I am like, oh, here to, I, I do not agree with the Western academia, like academia and like the Socratic method. And you, like, we don't know what our ancestors did because it was, it was erased. But I have, uh, and I have committed myself to Western academia in the same way I am, like I'm married to it. And I, I know, five seconds, I'm trying. Um, so I'm gonna come at it from that perspective because we're here, we exist and we exist within the system. And I'm gonna try 
to check myself to compromise myself and us and all of us the group yeah and with that final thought denny your time is up thank you so much do you mind sending in will please All right, well, you have two minutes the minute you start talking. Well, not to waste anyone's time, I'm just going to withdraw my nomination. So you're going to withdraw your nomination? That is correct. All right, you're going to withdraw your nomination. All right, it is um, so just the two then. Do you mind go grabbing the other two in the hallway? Yeah, it is. So. All right, well, just to let the council know, um, Will has withdrawn his nomination, so now we're only down to two candidates. I motion we adopt our two candidates as our chairs. Second. Second. All right, there's a bit. Yes, so once we get back in the room, we'll go back to our seats. We will. No, it's all right. All right, well, so um, with the dropping out of one of our candidates, there's been a motion on the table just to adopt our two candidates as is, and there's been a second to it. Um, let's just go around the room and vote yes or no to that. Um, so I don't have a, like a list on me. Do you want to throw any of that? But let's go around the room. So start with Paul. Aye. Tom. Aye. Re. Aye. Matt. Aye. Gabe. Aye. Denny. I kind of want to say nay for fun, but no, yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, awesome. Will? Uh, Alejandro? John? John is on mic, so you have to give him a mic afterwards. Aye. All right, and I vote aye as well. Um, no one's online, so it is unanimous. Did I miss someone? Uh, I mean, I... They both did aye. Aye, yeah. yeah. Um, well, with that, the uh, motion is adopted unanimously. Um, Danny and Matt will be our new co-chairs for this next hey. fall semester. Now, you guys have the choice. Um, in the resolution, it stated you guys can take over control now or next week if you want some time to do that. Oh, sorry. So, um, what say you? Because I will gladly hand relinquish control over to you now if you wish. I will play Lego to next week. All right, Denny. OK, um, OK. What are we are we doing? Number two is all over. Yeah, so. You guys have the option if you want to take over. Oh, wait drink. until next week, please. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that conversation table with Paul. Oh, let's wait until that. There we go. So I'll set up a meeting with you all at some point this week to get you guys started. So um, next, we will move on to section two of new business voting access presentation via Matt. So Matt, you have the floor. I am voting to, or I'm uh, tabling that. Okay, you brought it forward. You choose them. It doesn't need to be voted on. You've withdrawn it from the nomination. All right, we'll put that in new business next or business next week. Um, next is something I brought forward, and this is just kind of um, something we have to do. Um, we need to appoint two representatives to the University Planning Budget Advisory Committee and Process, the UPAC committee meeting. This is the meeting that me and Alejandro went to this morning. Um, they do a lot about uh, university budgets. Um, there's a whole, there's a like, wide, diverse spread of people there. So um, I'm going to open up nominations for that. Paul? I would like to nominate uh, Thomas. Is there a second for that? I'll second it. All right, there's been a second for that. Um, next, someone raise a hand over there. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to nominate Thomas. I wanted to know if Alejandro would be interested. I was also going to nominate Alejandro. I second that. We all second that. I respectfully decline. Fair enough, fair enough. Is there a second nomination? I plan on going to those meetings anyway, so I'll nominate myself. I second that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they eventually... 
go to the board eventually. So um, there's two there's two seconds, two nominations on the board for Thomas and me. Anyone else? All right. Um, I'll just make a quick motion to accept the two nominees as is. Is there a second for the motion? Second. second. All right. Um, I think we'll just go. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Any abstentions? All right. It is unanimous. Uh, Tom and me will be the uh, members for that committee. All right. On next, um, a discussion about goals, norms, um, accountability, expectations, and office hours. Um, I brought this forward, but um, I can also suggest bringing back the dean's office or the dean's um, from our retreat. So um, I just can, let's open discussion, Naomi. I think in regards to office hours. Um, I don't think that they should necessarily be like concrete because I don't know, like Re knows this about me. I'm involved in many, many different things on campus. So I'm mostly available by virtual um, things, but I had be handing out my cards left and right. I had somebody reach out to me about something that I had absolutely no idea of how to help them and was able to connect them with somebody who can help them. Um, so I think that as long as we are advocating for the students, um, those can count as your hours, but I think that it should be maybe not required, but at least try to talk about something where you help students throughout the week, um, whether that just be a conversation or bringing up a problem that someone like brought to you. I think that's really important when it comes to the advocacy side. Surprisingly enough, I did agree with Alan last semester when he said that. Can't even lie. That was good. That was a good point. Um, but when it comes to like accountability and expectations, we do need to be taking steps as an advocacy council to write the resolutions to do actually take part and make actions in doing stuff that is changing the changing the livelihood for the students for the better in a positive manner, standing up for students. And that doesn't have to be one group of students. It can be, you know, multiple groups of students, because I'm not going to lie. We have like, what, 18,000 plus students. We can't represent necessarily all of them. We're here to represent all of them. But the realistic side of that is like individually, we can't do that, but we can do the mass majority groups that come to us with these problems and that we are presented with and do it in the best ways that we can. Um, so I think that it's responsible to say that we need to make feasible goals and not things. It's good to have like a good big gigantic goal that we can leave for the next generation of student government. But we also got to think about what's feasible so we can start keeping a record of the things that we have actually accomplished rather than just the ideas we've had on paper. I have a kind of question slash response to that. Um, I think when we go into goals, I think what we should do is plan to have the deans back in here to kind of help us navigate our goals and kind of get something written on the table and something published. Like, hey, these are our goals for this semester. Office hours in that response. Um, one um, suggestion slash critique I got at both tabling events because I went to both of them was that we're not in our office. And I do think because we're getting paid, I believe in our constitution, it says like five hours were mandated to be there, at least a week. That's a very small commitment, I think. And I think we should absolutely have a schedule on there saying, hey, that's when these counselors are going to be here. And I think it's very easy for us just to say, hey, but take a few hour, an hour out of the day, out of the week, just to be in the office. And I think we should definitely just do that. So that's all I'll add on. Paul? Um, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, like we should try and have some like minimum office hours, but we also need to understand we have, you know, folks who are busy, so the, those aren't going to look the same for everybody. Um, and we may not even expect, um, you know, those who can't to, to do it. Um, I, I, I'm already thinking of a day where I have time to begin to fit in um, part of that five hours and maybe another part of the day uh, to fit it in. Um, and I think we should work towards that. Um, I wanted to say in regards to a norm that could help us navigate away from some of what happened today. We could talk about uh, like, I don't know, there's uh, there's some, we, we went over this last year, if you remember, where we were like addressing the chair, avoiding uh, disparaging someone's like motives in some way. And so I think if we go into every meeting with that in mind, that, uh, you know, whenever someone's making a motion, even if it's to do some par something that you might find parliamentarily like little and uh, like hair splitting, uh, that we assume that everybody's entering into at least the conversation here with the best of intentions. Um, and we direct our comments at the chair, I think, in some way would help us navigate parts of that. And I think is a decent norm to establish. But that's all I got. And I like a lot of what you said about practical goals. I think that's a good thing. Um, yeah. 
Well, then that means me. I'm just going to say something real quick. Naomi's right. Thank you. I just, I think we can find a happy middle. I'm happy little middle. My English secondary language came out there. Um, like, I agree that there should be some structure. I completely agree that is necessary. But it's also truth that, like, sometimes for us as, like, people of color that come with, like, certain layers of oppression, it seems like you're just trying to push us back. And I'm not saying you necessarily. I'm saying the struct like the structures and the system like the systematic structures and the bureaucracy and like after all the centuries, we do not have time to follow that anymore. And that, I think that's where the conflict is going to come. And I think as chair, I hope that I am able like and they, we, that we come in with arguments and that we feel like we need to interject into something. It's because it's it's a practical argument and a practical goal. Chair Hannah. We'll do Matt, Naomi, and then Paul. I do think something that maybe we can bring up next week is actually have a conversation and create our like group norms um, and feed off of what we did in the trainings. Um, just so we have a on top of the Robert's Rules of Order, just a general accepted um, engagement rules for the committee, um, including some accountability expectations. Um, because one I would like to see maybe involved in there is how like many events or tablings kind of stuff or anything we do, do we have an equal representative of our counselors at any sort of events we have? Naomi, then Paul, and then me. Oh, there my pen over there. Not the fancy pen. I know. Um, listen, I'll get it after this if you if you allow me. Um, so, whew, thank you. Um, and thank you. Uh, and, every, and also, Paul, just thank you guys for everything that you're saying here. It's very um, reassuring uh, on Paul's uh, note here, just to kind of like respond. I think that that's a very good way to come at things. And something that I've learned um, through multiple therapy sessions is that we need to when we are responding to one another, we need to look at this as, yes, we may have a difference of opinions, but we are here to face these problems together and not each other. Like that is our biggest issue. I feel like in TSEC that I've noticed in these past couple semesters, and it's honestly really traumatizing. I guarantee that I've seen every last one of y'all except the new folks in my therapy sessions. Like there's just so much that goes within it. And I think when it comes down to it is that we have to, even though we disagree with things, react out of compassion, not out of anger, not out of, um, you know, malicious intentions or anything like that. Give these people the benefit of the doubt, because when you look at someone, think about it. What you hate in someone, you most likely hate in yourself in some way, shape, or form. So don't sit there and try to criticize someone for their beliefs or their opinions when you probably have something of the same direction on another set of subjects. Um, in response to Denny, I really think that that's a very true thing, is that I like, I like having structure. I think it's very important. But when it comes down to it, this U.S. governmental system would not have happened without indigenous peoples, period. We taught y'all how to govern yourselves, a responsible method, and you just, and like the U.S. government decided to take it to a whole other level of tyranny, tyranny, whatever, and start extinguishing the people who initially came up with these ideas and processes, systems, and structure. So why is it that we are still being put under that oppressive systems and not being brought to, like, we have a seat at the table now. So now, no offense to, like, the people who are not ethnically diverse, but it's now our responsibility as people of color to come to this table as we are sitting here, make our ancestors proud, and reconstruct the system to make sure that we are putting it in a form that our ancestors would be proud of. Because I am tired of us doing it the same old simple ass U.S. governmental structure that we implement in every other institution. Sorry, white, primarily white institution. It's not appropriate. Y'all are on our land, period. Um, default progressive stack, John has not spoken yet. So, um, John, you're up and then Paul. To quell a lot of the foolishness when it comes to arguments and stuff is I would like to see us starting next meeting. Before our meeting, we have a, a meditation and then actually set some intentions because when we set the intentions, when we deviate, we can remember what the intention is because the intention will put a retention on the disagreement. Thank you, John. Paul, you're up next. Um, I am glad to say that I uh, share a, um, a, a type of uh, 
liberation oriented politic, emancipatory oriented politic when it comes to national oppression with a lot of the people at this table. And when we talk about how Robert's rules relates to that and how we structure these meetings, I can agree that there are probably ways in which the wider, like, uh, the wider phenomenon of national oppression and racism can bleed into the way we practice things. And we should be mindful and conscious of that. Um, but I think that the fundamental roots of these things, when we talk about, um, you know, indigenous students and we, we, we talk about Chicano students or African-American students coming to the campus that experience these like setbacks, these setbacks are very material and they're out there and they're happening every day and they're recreated by very real material relations. Um, I'm interested in challenging those things, and I do work every day to do that. Um, how I think Robert's Rules relates to it is that um, it's not perfect, but I do think it is one of the best ways we have to run a meeting yet. And I think in the absence of, and I don't care if it's called Robert's Rules or if it's Rob Rules, exactly. It's what our bylaws have right now, but it can be changed. But what I care about a system of operation is that everybody has the chance to speak is that things are democratically decided, is that we have a way to question decisions that have happened and that there's, a, uh, there's an ability for the minority to continue to speak out. And Robert's Rules has those things. Um, I think absent a structured conversation in, in a room like this, um, what you can sometimes end up with is the voices that rise to the top are the ones most familiar with how to navigate the chaos at that point. Um, and, and, and if there is, in fact, a chaos that more people are organized or, or are more capable of uh, traversing, and when I refer to chaos, I mean a bureaucratic chaos, we're going to find out that it's a lot of maybe the, the, uh, the, uh, the white voices in the room that, 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 that float to the top in those discussions. And so I think that Robert's Rules can actually be a tool that we use to um, make sure everybody's heard in the room. and uh, And... We can modify it in some way if we if we reach a point where we say that you know this is actually getting in the way of this particular way of being that is more um, you know more present in in another culture we don't see represented at the table. Uh, I just I really think that you know we ought to maintain some structure and uh, and thanks for bringing up oppression. We need to continue working against that, but it's going to be a lot of work outside of this space because like you said, it's a lot of pushing back and that needs to happen externally. It can't really happen internally. Uh, thank you. I think I'm next. Um, just to just to put kind of like I'm not trying to end this, but I'm trying to kind of like put a date on there. Um, it sounds like we would do want to talk about norms. So what I'm going to probably work with the new chairs is to invite the deans back in um, to kind of facilitate this discussion of norms, accountability and processes, because it seems like that's where, where the general consensus of the room is. So um, I don't think we need to vote on that. Do we need to vote on that? I think, yeah, I think it's just discussion, but I think it'd just be an invitation. Uh, most likely it'll take up our entire meeting, but it'll be filmed and stuff. And we can have dis we can have vibrant discussion on what our norms are and all that stuff coming up. So my goal is to work with Denny and Matt to get that done in the next two weeks, because I think we need to do this immediately. So um, next in the stack is Naomi. I do um, a quick point of order. I think the reason I think it's okay we not vote on that is because anybody can invite anybody to these meetings. Yeah. That's it. Cool. So Naomi, progressive stack, John, who else? Will, Re. Um, yeah, I really like what John said. I think that a lot of us kind of like, hee hee ha, ha that's funny. Like, okay, we're not going to do that. No, he's right. We need to do something very progressive like that because it does, that comes from a lot of different indigenous cultures. Like we have a moment of clarity, of prayer, of blessing usually where we sit there and we appreciate the space that we're in and acknowledge that the energies that are here and the people that are here are all valuable and hold value to what they're going to contribute to the discussion that's going to be going on. It creates a mutual sense of respect for one another. So that way, when you're acting, your intentions are out of respect. If you do not move with intention, you are not about to be proving anything. You're not about to be making big moves. So say, I guess in <laughs> the slang terms, I guess. Um, but I completely agree. And honestly, at some point, if you would like to work on a resolution, John, I would 1000% love to help you on that where we, vote to do something like that before our meetings. Like if we can all just get here even two minutes before the meeting start or even two minutes into the meeting, just take a second to take five deep breaths together and recognize that we are all here for the same purpose and it is to serve the students. John, you're next. 
I wanted to make an announcement too. Uh, anybody that is on Medicaid, is it Medicaid? Yeah. Lyft has a thing going on now to where when you sign up for it, you get five, you can ride the e-bikes and the scooters for five cents a minute. So if any of you all are interested in the link, I will send it to you. So it's, if you, oh, <laughs> you, yes. All right, Will, you're next, and then Re, you're in that one. I would personally find myself doing the meditations with you if you started it, but I also believe it's important to allow anyone that does not want to participate to not participate. Re, you're next. My point is about the way we hold on to Robert's rules, and I just want to say respectfully that when we're in process and going through things, and sometimes we don't follow it exactly, I think we need to release that diligence because it can get tense and fraught and it can upset people. So I hope that we approach this with grace and carry through this term with our new chairs and everybody just you know, take a breath. I think it's a great idea to do that at the start. But remember that, of course, Robert rule, Robert's rules um, combats chaos and keeps us on task, and that's important. But if we don't follow every bit of minute, 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 I can't say it, minutia, thank you, perfectly, we've just got to let it go. I think that's an important thing. Matt, you're up next, then Paul and Thomas. Oh, and, uh, yeah. So to John about the resources, um, please forward them to me as well, because um, those are great resources I think we could post on our social media so all students can have access to them. Um, and to Ree's point, um, that's where I think it would be maybe next week setting aside some time and I'll work with Denny um, to work on some group norms as well. So using Robert's Rules of Order is kind of that kind of bottom line infrastructure, but then being able to create like our group norms, they could be an evolving document and we could kind of revisit and approve each week. And if we need to add something, we can add something to kind of, again, use Robert's rules or as the baseline, but also kind of create some house rules. Paul, Tom, me. Um, I know there's a lot of what you said, Reed, that I agree with, like we shouldn't get like dragged down in the minutia. Um, and then, like, the little part that we probably disagree on is whether or not what I was bringing up in the meeting was minutia, right? Like, I brought it up because I thought it was, like, important to whether or not, you know, we'd be able to answer the question ahead of us. Um, and I just, I want to be able to, as a norm, like, raise something that, like, I want to be able to raise something they think is important, even if it's just, like, a snitty little parliamentary thing, even if it might uh, frustrate someone or make them upset. Um, and I think that, you know, when it comes to, like, being upset about a thing, we all need to manage a little bit more self-control, myself included, right? Earlier in the meeting and call him Mike Childish. So, um, yeah, I think there's like a twofold part of that. Part of it I agree with. The other part of it, I'm like, oh, you know, sometimes folks, you know, are going to say something that might upset one another. Like um, someone might say something about the police that I really disagree with and I need to be able to just, you know. Thomas Rip. Yeah, so I wanted to talk very briefly about our uh, conversation on like the rules and accountability that we do, the norms in a how be it. Um, I'm all for like uh, improving the, uh, the how we set things up because uh, I understand that like uh, Robert's rules, I think, is a fairly old rule set. And like we can always be thinking on thinking critically on what we can do to be better. Uh, I just, I also think that we also need to like engage in the content of those rules to figure out like what aspects we're like disagreeing with. Um, that's a, I think that that's the entirety of my statement for that. All right. Uh, next, um, I'm going to do two things here. Um, first, apologize to the committee. Um, I was a little flustered earlier. Um, I do want to apologize to Paul. Uh, yeah, I get a little. Uh, I was just a little flustered, all that stuff, but uh, I apologize for that. And this is why I'm, I didn't run for chair. 
right back at you, Mike. Let's bury the hatchet. Yes, as as we do. Um, so, and then secondly, um, this is just orderly. I'm, I put the fifth thing here: the discussion of multicultural orgs council. I put that on the agenda. I'm just going to push that back to next week. So, just that. So, who's next? Anyone else? Armando next. Yes, go ahead. I just wanted to point out, I applaud everyone's efforts in trying to make things run smoothly, but we have spent over 35, close to 40 minutes on talking feelings on how things are run and not conducting business that is beneficial to the student body and or our time being here. So let's please take these conversations offline and let's get to business and discussion as to how we can help the students here. Just so it's efficient because none of us want to be here on a Friday past 2.30. So we can end the meetings early if we can knock these things out early. That's all. I have I have one last comment. Denny, go ahead. Uh, precisely because we had a lot of feelings on the police. I, I ask of all of us if we are going to have a comment on whether the police should be involved uh, to be prepared with like a two or three minute uh, speech. And then if you say yes or no, why? If not, what is... What is your other suggestion? Just so we can move forward next meeting real quick. Anything else? Well, it sounds like there's nothing else, so I think we can end this discussion. I think what so just to recap, I think what's going to happen is the new chair is going to get together and kind of look at some norms and stuff like that, and then we're going to get the deans involved at some point in the next two weeks. So is that a motion we adjourn? I second that motion. So with that, we will go into voting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, friends, have a good weekend. Drive safe, and I'll see you all next week.